Hello and welcome back to Gamer's Remorse. Today we are taking a look at Amalgamal Zoo by Matfish Games. A game for 2 to 4 players and plays for about 30 to 60 minutes. The objective of the game is to mix and match animal DNA to get the best amalgamals in your zoo. Each amalgamal has an attack, defense, popularity, dominant gene type, and special ability. The special abilities can be used to attack other amalgamals or protect your own amalgamals from predatory opponents. The setup of the game is fairly simple. Each player is given two cheat sheets, an amalgamal index and a reference sheet for the icons and rules. Each player is dealt seven lab cards and the wilds is created from a shuffled amalgamal deck, and three are laid out face up, forming the wilds. Then each player takes turns spending two actions on their turn. The turns can be hunt in the wilds, create an amalgamal, play an F action lab card, or challenge an opponent's amalgamal. In addition, A lab cards can be played at any time during the gameplay. Each lab card serves a dual purpose in that it has both an action and an amalgamal DNA type. The player must choose one of those features to use during their turn. And finally, only six amalgamals may exist in a player's zoo at one time. If a player attempts to construct an additional amalgamal, they must release one amalgamal into the wilds. The winner is the first player to get an entire set of five amalgamals from a single dominant DNA type, denoted by the color, or get a total of 25 popularity points. Hello and welcome back to Gamer's Remorse. Today we're taking a look at the independent game Amalgamal Zoo, which is currently on the Game Crafter. Uh, we've played through it once and I can tell you that we liked it so far. So let's play through it again and you guys can have yourselves a look. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the wilds. So we're going to have three amalgamals put out there. The Mosquito, the Salamantula, and the Octopus. You're right. Each player gets seven, uh, what do you call these DNA? Lab cards. Lab, Lab cards. cards. Whoever can make the funniest animal noise can go first. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Let's see, get, let's see if I can get this to work. See, now I'm not even getting to I've tried to laugh. Yeah. yeah see, oh. I can't, because I can't hold the air pocket. Are you going for this? Dolphin. Are you going for this? See, you win. I, I think I, he's got it. I, I, keep, got I keep laughing when I'm trying to hold the air. All I can do is make farty noises see. with yeah. my armpit Well, or what animal is that? That's a Brian noise. I'm just I could, I could say that some animal makes that noise. <laughs> so, I will begin because I made the pig chipmunk noise. So what would a pig chipmunk hybrid be? Big monk? That works for me. Punk. <laughs> Punk. <laughs> so what I'm going to do right now is I'm looking at the DNA samples that I do have and trying to determine uh, the best possible amalgamal I could create. I'm going to discard my bird and reptile amphibian DNA. The toad runner. Alright, so that is one of my turns. And now I get another turn. And I am going to lay a trap out there. Trap, trap. And that is my turn. So, then I take three of these lab cards, and I need to be down to seven by the end of my turn, and guess what? I have seven. I'm going to splice together an insect as my dominant, along with a reptile, in order to get the salamantula. Reptile. Oh wait, the salamantula is out there. Yeah. I can't get the salamantula. Blast it! Okay, this is... But you could do it the other way around. I could do it the other way around and, and get, get a big guana. Alright, I'm gonna make the tortoister. Mm, tortoister. Oh, that one is good. I do. So I'm actually gonna play breakout on your toe drum. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Electric fence. Alright, cancels that out. So now I'm gonna draw three and end my turn. Alright, aquatic and large animal for a crusta sheep. You love that crusta sheep. I love that crusta sheep. Yeah, you do. I will say he has great offense and defense. It's a six and six, right? Yep. yep. And he's immune to tranquilizer. Yep, that is pretty sweet. And you can still use energy drink on him to up yeah. his stats. You yeah. and his stats can't be lowered, so it is an awesome one to and have. And then I am going to Yeah, I'm gonna put in some overtime. 
That will come into play later. And my crust of sheep is going to challenge your tranquilize. My tortoister? Yep, your tortoister. Alright, so cards if we want to, because yep. right now it's even Stevens. Yep. But actually, I'm going to go ahead and cattle prod, so you automatically lose. Repel an attacking amalgamol. Attack Ooh. automatically fails. Alright. No counter attack is allowed. Well. And I'm fine with that, seeing as my attack is zero. And did I play? Yep, I played my overtime, so I do have a second action. A wing with a small animal for a badger wing deer. Yep, the badger gar. And then I will draw three cards and end of my turn. What does latch onto others mean for the blue tick? Blue tick means that it latches onto the animal and they become one animal for the rest of the game. Oh, so you get two plus stats to everything. Pretty much. So it's kind of nice because they get held in the same pen then, because they're treated yeah. as one animal. So really it just beefs up your stats, but doesn't mm -hmm. actually... Yep. Interesting. Well, um, step one, I'm going to go hunting for the Salamantula. Very nice. Got it. Nice. Salamantula. <clears throat> So that was one action. My next action, I am going to... I am going to get that blue tick. So, bink and bink. Actually, hold on. Hold that thought, because that would be my second action. Or can I play overtime after? You can play overtime, okay. whenever. Alright, so I'm going to do the blue tick thing. So I'm going to beef up this guy. So Toad Runner now becomes 5 and 9. Man, he's got some, some tough defense. Yeah, and then I'm going to do overtime, and I'm going to lay another trap. All right, and he's prepared. Three. So then which trap, what did he fetch? So it's first? in order. It's in order. Right. So basically the next two amalgamals that are released to the wild, he gets. I oh, get to draw one like because of Tortoister. Yep, yep. Girls for plus one lab. Make a bear on us. So dominant mammal and then aquatic. I'm really gonna do investors to take two more cards. Do it. Uh, let's see, that gives me six. So I'm gonna play my overtime to spend another action. I uh, will try to get the mosquito. Got him. Wow. You were good at hunting. Apparently, oh, man. I want to flip more. Uh, I know. Okay. Well, what do you have? Wild. You've got nine, actions? ten, and twelve. That's all your actions, right? Now. That's all my actions. So now I. Oh, you draw three. Don't worry. Draw okay. three. Don't mind the fact that you looked at it, but okay. And then I get one. Uh. Then I have to discard one. My crust sheep is going to challenge your tor tortoister. Your tortoister. Okay, so you're getting tried. I'm gonna tag team. And I will tag team my Barana. And if you win now. He gets sent back into the pile. Well, you can challenge. What? You that if you win a challenge. This is whenever uh, he wins a duel. Okay. So basically now, because he's in here, if you yep. lose he gets sent back to the pile. So in that case, I'm going to trank you guys again. And I'm going to energy drink my guy. So which one are you tranking? Well, they, they're added together. Right? Yeah. So does it matter? Well, it does, because technically you tranked him, mm -hmm. but he can't go lower than zero. Oh, you're so right. he's zero yeah. four. So then I, I trank there. All right. But your so attack basically, is if you choose to counterattack. Now, yeah. uh, so essentially you're an 06, I'm an 88. Let's see, and you can't be tranked, right? Correct. Um, all right. And you're 
10 minus ten, 4, 6, minus 10. 4, plus 4 is back to 10, 10 so we tie, which means I, I win, which win. means crustacean, crusta sheep goes back into the pile. But then you're going to need termites. Alright. Do we want to just say that I know? Or do we I, want I to I'll just put it there so you to, to make okay. sure it's over. Yeah. And then I'm going to draw 3. <clears throat> Well, uh, hey, look at that. I am going to use this investor's card and take two cards from the lab deck to start off. Alright. So, which one are you choosing? Oh, do I get to choose? No. I don't know of your choice. Um, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Actually, it's quite genius. Uh,. for the toy tor twister. Yeah, I may as well. So this one goes back to here, which then he gets Track trapped. Goes trapped. And it goes to you. And then I need to draw up it's the start of each turn. So I need to draw up three at the end of my turn. And it is your turn and I have exactly seven cards. No, I have yeah, I have seven. Alright. Send out my game hunter. Claim the octopus. What? Send in the professionals to hunt for you. Claim one amalgamal from the wild. That's awesome. So That's I now have the octopus. So now I am going to. So when do we add more to the wild? They need to be broken out from yeah. another zoo. Yep. So you never draw from the top. Attack the badger gar. Six. I think I'm gonna win. Yeah, no matter what, it's not a die, so I will win. Alright. It's fun time. I had animals in my zoo. That time has now passed. I am then on my turn going to do green, yellow, or if you go on, do a aquatic bird. A oh, while wow. at the start of my turn. <coughs> <use it. coughs> yep. And that's a stupid card, and I regret grabbing it. <coughs> so I'm gonna play an investor card to grab two, two cards. cards. Makes sense. Woohoo! Finally. Good grief. Okay, so I am going to create a hyena moon. Who's well, done that? might have more because I think I have an overtime card. I'm going to go into overtime. Lose my aquatic. <coughs> and I am going to attack. What's the star mean? Has crippling bouts of the giggle. Roll one die at the start of each duel or hunt. If if the die is a one or two, then it's your attack and defense are actually two instead of four. That sucks. Yeah. Oh my god. It's one of those where his his average, like, I, I don't really understand it because it's just like the same numbers as like a bear on him, mm -hmm. except his sucks. Of course, his isn't that great either because yeah. it, it doesn't yeah. allow you to keep the opponent. Alright, so these guys are going to attack your hawk. How are both of them attacking together? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have a thing about that. <laughs> I have a thing about that. Team, All right, team. Tag, tag team. team. But hold on, what what are his stats because of tag team? Though makes them both the same one, so they still only attack one. Yeah. Right. I'm only attacking one thing, but I want to read the stats before I determine what I'm going to attack. Oh. Yours. So uses six, six. Uh, that's a challenge. But what's his stats because of this guy? Six six. No no no. I can't tranquilizer him. You can't trank him or him, and you can't use cobra but venom. Venom. I think that's supposed to be venom. Yeah, it is. That's a typo. So hold on, let me let me rethink this action for a second. Venom is spelled right on mine. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna attack this guy, right? Alright. I'm using Those my tag, tag team, team, and I'm going to inner drink, drink them. Alright. So I am attacking with 10. Okay, I'm well, going to trank. Salamander. 
Salamantula. You also have the 2-2 two -two from the tick. Yeah. I counted that though. Because yeah. that was 5. Because that's 5, eight. 6, 7, 8, 8 9, 10, okay. which goes back down to 8. What if my investors are really pleased with me? No? 8 versus 6. Got it, sucker. Mm -hmm. What's his popularity? Zero there? popularity. Six, nine, yeah. 14. That's why he's easy to cover up, because you don't really need to see his 9, 18. 14, 18. 18 popularity. I mean, I could let one loose if you guys want. Well, then I just get it back. Is it safe to say that he's now right next to him? Four, five. Yeah. So then I drop three at the end of my turn. I'm going to play Abduction to take your Toad Runner Blue Tick. Now I'm going to attack your Hyena Moo with the Blue Tick Toad Runner. Or am I? Okay. Either event, that was uh, You saw my strategy and you decided to capitalize on it. Oh, totally. <laughs> You're like, I wasn't hey, going to have most take of those. Them. You have most of them. I'll take those from you. Yeah. That's it for you. That's it for me. So I'm going to do some investors. Now, two cards. Spinning a red and yellow for a ticket. What's your popularity now? Seven. 15. And I have one less spot, so even if I got a fiver, and I would pick 20. Brian has 13. 13. So we're really kind of close. We're kind of, yeah, all close together here. Making it tough to. I thought I was pulling out ahead last round. But that was... I wasn't going to let you do that. I saw what you were doing. I was just like, <laughs> if I don't do something quick, he's going to snap. I was one way. If I had an overtime, I would have attacked your badger. Oh, or whatever, that, it would have been up. so easy. Then my uh, tortoise sister. So, so, so. Let's be brought I mean, whatever. Wow, rock in a hard place, right? I know. Because I know he's going to attack me on my next turn for either of these purple ones. Hyena Moo is the easiest to do, unless he can somehow get Octopus discarded. So, if I grab another purple, that at least helps me tread water for a turn. Otherwise, I could shoot the moon, discard a card to give me two more cards, and hope that it's the exact right combination. The thing is, there's only five purple, and all five are on the board, so you yep. have to take one of his. Exactly, and that's what I'm facing. You see, because if we can, if either of us can take all five, mm -hmm. we win. Yep. Yeah. So, my octopus is going to fight your badger rider. My badger-gar. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's not mince words. I, I don't think this would work, but I just thought this was a cool combination. I have an ambush card. Which says, when challenged to a duel, ambush your opponent so that you attack first. Opponent can still counterattack if your attack is successful. Then I have Stealth Attack, which is launch a surprise attack when challenging a rival amalgamal to catch them off guard. Opponent cannot counterattack. Would that be able to be used in conjunction so that when I was attacked, I would actually be is, the one attacking is stealth him attack instead? A free Both of them are free. Would that be considered something where I become challenging them, is the thing. Because it says, yeah. stealth attack is when challenging a rival amalgam. Does ambush become, I am now challenging I him? So. Yeah. Because in that case, I would want to perform both of these. And then I'm going to re-ambush. So I'm attacking. And technically, you can't counterattack now, because I'm going to use your own well, card against you. I'm not involved, but correct. Because you are attacking. No, because I can still counterattack. But no, because you already played this, where you said, "All right, no counterattacks." And I no, said, "This, no, one, this says opponent him. cannot counterattack." Um, so essentially, you avoided his stealth attack. But yeah. I kind of wanted to just play that out, just because I yeah. thought it was interesting to see what would happen. So basically, it's become you're still going to go first. Yep. <clears throat> All right, and I think you're going to gain this pretty easily. Yeah. Goodbye, Badger Jar. I will miss the card you would have gotten. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and shoot the moon here. Let's see what happens, right? So I'm gonna do the investor thing and draw two cards. <sighs> Come on, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Not what I wanted, but this could work. 
this could work. Okay, so my octopus. You need another action. You've attacked, you've done investors. Hold on, you hold on, action. hold on, hold on. You need, what's the one called? Overtime. overtime. Son of a no overtime. All right, so that killed me. So, one, two, three, Did you draw? four, five, six. No, I didn't. But this is seven, so I'm gonna draw three and then discard three. Then I'm gonna play Breakout on your octopus. Can't. Oh, me into Breakout. Breakout on your Salamantula. Okay. It doesn't so. get discarded. It goes back to the wild where your trap reacts. Yay! Right. <laughs> Airborne <laughs> hasn't really been useful for anybody. Ooh, a Beal Sting. He's doing. He's doing the wild? Oh, okay. Immune trap. Oh, that one's awesome. He's really overlooked because of the zero offense, yeah. but but he looks cool in his immune to traps. Right. Let's just draw two. All right, so I'm going to make the mag python, which is green, and purple, and that's all six categories. And now, for my second turn, I'm going to do a DNA switch where I swap two cards that have the same oh. DNA. Oh. I just wanted to check something. I was actually wanted to check the rules on that very thing. A DNA switch or Beal card is played against either. The only way they can be separated. And that what? was a DNA yeah, switch. So, so technically you've got that one, but not... Son of a... So it would Blue Tick attach to something new? Well, I'm wondering it? if it attaches to the Mag Python then because of the fact that they switch spots. I except think you, you can't choose. move except on your turn. Yeah. So I'm guessing it would stay unattached, and on your turn you'd get to choose where to put it. Quite possibly. Yep. Because so I, I knew times. I had seen something about the blue tick Curses. being able to be separated. If that were the something. truth, then I would have done it a different way. Can I undo these that turn? I would say so, but... I mean... Undo the entire creation of everything and yeah. stuff, so, alright. But yeah, that was something that I was looking up because I was just like, I think if you switch them, they become separated. So yeah, but it would have been a sweet win because I you know. got all of yours and then switched and got both of them. But no, the DNA switch separates them. Okay, so what's happening now is I'm going to do a tag team between my... Oh, I didn't draw two. I was going to say, because the rule said something else. I think it's the Beal Sting was the other thing it said. DNA switch and Beal Sting were the only things that could separate them because a Beal Sting like, targets one of these. They're treated as one. But if you target one of them with like a beal sting or something, it just targets one. It makes it very confusing like that. So I'm going to tag team using my Salamantula and Octopus, right? Ooh. And then I have an energy drink that I'm going to give to them. And I have another energy drink I'm going to give to them. Basically you're attacking this, right? Yes. Yeah. So that becomes 9 defense, mm -hmm. with now your 9 attack plus 4, which is 13. Mm -hmm. Wait. Brian, so if what you want to help, I would suggest helping. What are the numbers? Because he's leading me by 4 right now. Leading you by 4? Mm -hmm. Don't do it, Brian. Brian's just sitting over there, and he's looking Let's pretty even it good. Up. What? Wait! How many counters is a toxin? Yep. Is it? What? I don't no. know if energy drink is a toxin. Cobra rabbit is a certain animal, so it, mm -hmm. this one only makes them immune from tranquilizer and cobra rabbit venom. So they can still get the energy drink. So, so is it actually... It is even Steven? Because uh -huh. they're nine, and they're together make nine. So now it's even Stevens. So now you just have to outroll me. Yeah. He yeah. wrote it, he got it, he wins. Bye! Alright, this has been Amalgamal Zoo. Uh, I guess let's start from the right. Uh, yeah. Ryan, what'd you think? Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, it was an interesting game with some mechanics that, I mean, they're not necessarily new. I've seen them implementized before, but they were rebranded in a new way. 
I think it's a great game to play with children who are just old enough to play thinking games. Um, the art is fun, it's very cute, if I may be so bold as to use that word. Um, you know, it's just right. something like... We'll allow it for once. Like, we'll it's, it's a game I would love to break out with my niece when she's old enough. Here, the visuals on a scale of zero to two, I'm gonna give that a one and a half. Um, partially because I love the dual card mechanic. Uh, we had to choose, you know, do I want to hold mm -hmm. on to it for the DNA, or do I want to use a potentially awesome ability? Like, I thought that was really cool, um, the way they pulled that off visually. It could have been done really badly, but I thought they did it really well. So I'm going to give that one and a half. Skill luck on zero to one, I'm going to give that a point five. Um, there's a lot of luck in drawing, as well as when you're attacking, once you bring the dice into play. Um, so I'm going to give that a, a point five on there. For the pacing, zero to two, I'm giving this a zero. Um, there is a lot of room for analysis paralysis in this game, um, especially when you have up to seven cards, you're sitting here looking at your little tiny print handout trying to figure out what you can build. Um, and as a player who doesn't like that especially, as someone whose turns are generally pretty quick, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting forever, and I'm like, and done. Um, so that, that can get annoying and you can be waiting forever. Let's say you're doing a four player game, and if all three other players are taking forever when it gets back to you, you can be like, well, I just ran and did some grocery shopping while I was waiting. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm, I'm Quite that possible a... on my turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, imagine playing with three of you now. I know. <laughs> but Theme and Immersion, I'm going to give that one out of two. Um, I mean, it's a game that definitely feels like fun. Um, you, know, you know, you're actually playing a game, the game is not playing you. Um, you know, like you have, I think the pictures really add to it, they're really amusing. Um, the way they had the drawings of the two animals split together. Um, so, that, so that's a, what did I say for that? I, I, think, think, I, one, I think I said a one for that. Uh, mechanics, zero to one, I'm gonna give that a one. I really enjoyed the mechanics. They reminded me a lot of a game we previously played, Link Below, um, potion making practice, um, in which case you're mixing ingredients to make a potion. In this case, you're mixing DNA to create animals. Um, but I, it's a mechanic that I really enjoy. Um, so I'm giving it a 1 for that. And is it fun? Uh, between 0 and 2, I'm going to give that a 1. Uh, I mean, it's definitely enjoyable, but it's not a game I'd want to play repeatedly. And it's not a game that I would make a game night out of. I gave it a 5. Alright, so uh, my general thoughts on it, uh, just starting off, the artwork kind of turned me off at first. Uh, it was very cartoony, and I come into a DNA game, and I'm like, okay. You know, I'm, I'm thinking... Uh, Oh, what's that game where you go around the world and you save thing, you know, play? Oh, Pandemic. Pandemic, yeah. thank you. It reminded me of Pandemic initially. I, I hadn't played it yet, hadn't read the rules, and I'm like, cartoony, weird. But I gotta say, I love the cartoony part mm -hmm. once I got it. Mm -hmm. Once I started reading the mm -hmm. rules and I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. I really like it now, so my apologies for judging it before I opened that cover. That said, um, let's go through my rubric. Uh, the quality of components, uh, like I said, I love the cartoony artwork. Um, how you organize the cards themselves were great. The little drawings of the different characters, I mean, that's that's a lot of work. And it shows, and I love it. Uh, I love the iconography. Everything's very simple to read. You didn't make the text too small. That's something I usually struggle with when I make cards with lots of text. Um, everything was great. Uh, you had nice margins around the text, that was easy to read. You had margins around the cards, which added to that cartoony feel. Uh, the one thing I would say to improve on is, and this could be just the copy I got, it seemed like the alignment was a little bit off. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if we can zoom in on this. Go, go 1080p power. <laughs> go, go new camera. Right. Uh, the margin you can see is quite a bit larger on this side than it is on this side. And, you know, being, I don't know, yeah. a, a graphical nerd, it kind of distracted me, but not enough to take away from the game. Just not enough to get you the full two points, so I'm going to give you one and a half on that. Good balance of skill to luck. I, I would say there absolutely is skill here. Um, a lot of it had to do with knowing how to play those specific lab cards. Mm -hmm. Ambush, uh, tag team air horn, you know, and whether you want to play the DNA side or or the actual action side. Uh, there was all of that and also which animals to go after, those all matter. So I'm going to give you one on that because I think there was skill there, you have to know how to play. There, 
I mean, there could be luck if you're dealt a really yeah. good hand, but... Uh, analysis paralysis, as Brian said, that's a fundamental issue with games like this. Anything that requires lots of processing to understand what to go for, you're going to have a slower game. Um, part of that is the players, I'm very guilty of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say that you're, you're not going to be able to work around that. That's just how this game is. There's lots of games out there like that. I wouldn't change a thing, however you, it does affect your score here, so zero for that. Theme, <coughs> zero to two. Uh, I would say there's theme. It, it gets difficult when you get in this cartoony direction or minimalist, minimalistic direction, which this isn't, but we played a game earlier that was. Um, theme gets a little difficult because, yeah, we're we're creating these amalgamals, uh, but what's the theme? I mean, I've never been a biologist before, so I don't know how to act, you know? Uh, I also don't think that zookeepers pit their animals against each other. To duel, but you know, I mean, if you might be part of the fun, it's, you're it's a Pokemon, Pokemon thing, thing. kind of, you know, if, Pokemon, if you accept, Digimon, whatever. If you accept the premise that you're at a point where people are splicing animals together, mm -hmm. any regulation about animal fighting has probably been out the window a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's true. So That's fair. So I'm going to give it a one for that. Thrill versus competitive, I would absolutely say that's that's there in spades. So I'm going to give you two for that. And was it fun? Um, I'm going to give you a one for that. So that gives you six and a half, I believe, is my score. So I, I definitely liked it. I would play it again. There's a little bit of remorse there just because of the analysis paralysis, but there's no way to build around that in a game like this. Uh, I did like it. So what do you think, Eric? Yeah. Uh, I would have to agree with you guys. Uh, I'm not as picky about my cards <laughs> as some of these guys. Uh, something that I would like to see is I would. Our game didn't really seem to have much to do with the wild. I would like to see the wild come into play more. Mm -hmm. um, zookeepers actually catching animal amalgamals in this case in the wild and bringing them into the zoo because this this game is so concentrated around collecting them from here and putting them out in front of you, I would have liked to see them get replaced as soon as they got taken. Uh, overall, I would probably give it a 7. This is a game that I would enjoy. Uh, like Brian said, I wouldn't build a game night out of it. I wouldn't sit down and play this game for hours on end. I mean, it would depend on how long the game took, I suppose. But, <laughs> uh, but it's, a, it's a good solid game for me. I, I enjoy it a lot, and I have enough to laugh at with it that... I can have fun. Yeah. Uh, this has been Amalgamal Zoo. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, see you guys next time. Six and a half, seven, and what'd you give it? Six. Lots of... Oh, we can't do a total. Anyway... <laughs>